Hello folks, this is Daddy Derelict. We're going to be doing a commentary on Civil Discord Part 1, because why not? Um, for those who know this, or those who don't know, this was a machinima based on my kind of uh, exodus of my Army the Chief Discord server. Uh, that's myself there coming out to start. Um, very similar to Abnormality 3, this is kind of a parody of Infinity War with obviously references to civil war because it's civil discord so it was a civil war of sorts that happened in the server to put it simply you know i had implemented some new rules because of bullying and harassment that happened in the server and as a result you know a lot of people left the server so as a bit of a kind of a meme i decided to make this <laughs> joke about me being this tyrannical admin who put in all these draconian rules in the server um and almost lost half the people in the server in the process beautiful so now you have these core members of the server coming to take me down like thanos but only three members the other three of the members are taking down the fan series that are made online because i think john is he doesn't view rb chief fan series that favorably and i was working on an rb chief fan film for a while called ash to ashes which i've since uh, dropped for various reasons but um, I, a lot of the unused material from it has actually gone into Civil Discord, which I'm glad because while this is peppered with comedy and stupidity, um, you'll notice that there's not a lot of stupid or intentionally bad shots in here. So I wanted to flow more like a serious attempt. And one thing I'm particularly proud of with part one is the action scene um, here, because I think it flows really nicely, or at least it cuts really nicely anyway. There's much better ones out there for sure, but I really like yeah. the way this is. So you have myself and Raptor having a kind of an Irish one-on-one -on -one here. And then you'll have characters like Beta and Admiral Icarus coming in as well. Great voice acting by them, by the way. Whoever those voice actors were. And I'm guessing people are kind of confused why I'm using so many different armor abilities. And the reason for that is because it's supposed to be like that scene in oh, Infinity War when Strange is, you know, I think you'll find our powers equal to yours, or what was it? The will, our will equals to yours. So Thanos is obviously fighting them using the Infinity Gauntlet. So it's like each different armor ability is a different, uh, you know, Infinity Stone power in a way. And then obviously his power with, is using the bad hammer to bad people from his server with. Uh, the church from Army Chief obviously being, you know, like, tight to him, you know, referencing it. So I had to put those sound effects in there, you know. I think it kind of helped that joke land a bit more. I feel like it's a little bit here, this is similar to the fight scene at the end of Season 5 of RB. Although, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd go quite that far. But uh, I like the way it came together, you know. The rapper did a good job with his dialogue. And there was supposed to be a shot here where Raptor sees Derek just hanging out on the cliff. Um, and I just, I couldn't get it in there at the last minute when I was editing it because... The Civil Discord was supposed to be a one-off video. Like the entire 40 or so minutes was supposed to be the one video, but... Um, I was juggling this with maybe one or two other projects I'm doing IRL. And... Um, what happened because of that is because as I was going with Civil Discord, the file was so big, the project file was so big, that um, it would crash my system just by opening the project. So what I decided to do was to split it in half and obviously upload the part one and then part two. And that was difficult because I don't, I couldn't really find somewhere in part one that would be suitable to cut on because it was never intentional for it to be in two parts. And I really don't like splitting the story in two because... As stupid as the the story is, I really like the way it flows. Obviously there was supposed to be a bit of Irish dialogue there that only Raptor would understand. Um, this scene, um, this fight scene that's just finished, and the voiceover sequence that's coming up were last minute additions to Civil Discord. And the reason for that was because while I feel some of the story is self-explanatory and at least the references to Infinity War, um, I think that some people wouldn't necessarily understand what's going on. If someone like John watched it, which 
I, at this point, I don't have any intention of sending to him. I did initially, but I don't anymore. They would need some context for this. Anyone who's played the Halo games would be able to understand at least 50 to 60% of what's going on. But the fact that it's taking place on a Discord server needs to be explained more thoroughly and not just through title cards at the start of each scene. So I had Self Decorum come in and give some dialogue on this, which I think was important. I hope it makes sense, at least to the members of the server, because, like I said, I don't plan on sending this to John anymore. Abnormality 3, which is being shown right now, was planned to be a gift to John, and I think it was pretty suitable. He seemed to get a good kick out of it. Uh, uh, Civil Discord is more so a gift to the Discord itself. Because, you know, I'm very thankful for it. It's We've had a good time there, and I think to have some visual representation of the progress we've made, or at least as far as we come, would be fun. So there's my lovely avatar, standing on top of New Alexandria, because obviously I have a huge ego. And one thing I really like about this is how stupid I sound when I'm delivering my lines. Especially in the next scene in the church, which was actually initially supposed to be the first scene, and there are cuts of it I have unlisted where that is the first scene of Civil Discord and it actually flows really well which is one thing I'm kind of annoyed about looking back on it. This scene and the scene before it kind of take away some of the punch that the start has and that start scene in the church only makes sense to members of the server so the reason I made the fight scene and this scene was to give context to people who have not been in the server ever you know which could be most of the people, it could be very little of the people, but I kind of need to keep everyone in mind. Um, for the character of Captain Desi, uh, he had given me his armor permutations in the past, which I know I didn't get those right in this production. But the reason I gave him recon is because in a lot of his interactions online, he usually wears recon armor, and that's kind of an image that we find synonymous with him. So that's why I gave him recon in this. I didn't really give him specific armor perms after that, it's recon armor, that is the most central thing to his appearance. At least that's what I believe. So I like this scene, this scene's pretty cool. And I kind of wanted to find a reason to explain the characters one by one because while all the characters have their own scenes and their own moment to shine in this production, I kind of wanted to set them up like these badasses. Like obviously that happens with the um, the Reknub people, the R-E-K and U-B. I wanted to do that with Desi's crew as well, the, S the CME after class people. That way when they're set up in black and white you're thinking, oh these must be such cool people. And then when you see them actually in the, sh the actual civil discord, they're just complete dumbasses. And I love that idea of kind of subverting expectations and such. Um, a huge part of this was actually getting the map of the church. We could have made it without it, but it, it was so cool having it that I could no way not use it. Um, most people picked up on this when it initially uh, premiered on YouTube, but this is obviously the reminiscent of the decimation scene from Infinity War when Thanos snaps his fingers and everyone fades away. So I'm guessing some people would probably say this is more akin to Endgame since the end is at the start. Which is, which is true, and since I didn't intend for Civil Discord to be a two-parter, you could make the case that part one is Infinity War, part two is Endgame, which is fair, because Abnormality 3 was more inspired by Infinity War, came out around the same time as Infinity War, and then you have Civil Discord, which comes around the same time as Endgame. So it's all about how you see it. I think there's more of Infinity War in this than Abnormality 3, and towards the end, I think in part 2 it mirrors Endgame a lot more. Now I don't know if I'll release this before part 2, so I don't want to give too much away. But I think the red here showing was really cool. Again, the reason why I believe the power of the scene was taken away is because you already had colours being shown in the first two scenes. When this was the original first scene of Civil Discord, the red standing out was so much more bold and so much more stark. And it references some of the in-game teasers that we had back in spring, I believe, or um, late winter. So some of the dialogue kind of references 
the end of Infinity War as well, like the What did you do? And just like Endgame, you have the five years later, five months later thing. Which I think five months is roughly when that exodus happened in my server. Because it was sometime in spring. I think it was March, because I had to go through the logs when putting the script together for this. Um, so, obviously I have my long, drawn out establishing shots. All that rainbow there in the galaxy isn't supposed to symbolize Pride Month or, you know, the duality of man. It's supposed to represent the Reckonub flag, which I showed at the very start, which, okay, that was a Pride flag and I did have the kind of autism logo, but it's kind of, it, it's representative of that, not the Pride flag on its own. I'm only joking, it was just a random shot of the galaxy. So we have those long drawn out shots, and I kind of like the idea of that burning planet below them being, that could be reaching the universe of the game, but I like the idea of that being my server burning to the ground. Jazz. So Jazz. we're introduced to our okay. three of our main characters, which are Blizz, Jazz, and Best Girl. And the comparison I like to Avengers is that it's six oh, heroes, three, six main characters, one woman, five guys, just like Avengers. And I like this idea of them having their two different branch stories and towards the end of the story it kind of comes together with who's left. And sure, if it was possible to do split screen with six characters, I'd potentially do it. Doing this whole trickery of having two different game sessions and convince you there's multiple characters in one place at one time um, is fine. And it's relatively simple to do with, uh, you know, blocking and such, but... I mean, after a while it kind of gets tricky and sometimes you might mess yourself around by overlooking some small detail in continuity or something. But this bit I love. The title was really funny and I was laughing at it as I edited it. And that font is everything comes together well. I wanted to get some 3D font done, um, but obviously I don't have the technical skills to do that and I couldn't find anyone quick enough to help me with it. So I just did this, I said, you know what, it's almost cheap enough in a way where it's good. So I just left it in there. I was initially going to put a subtitle in here for John Server or something. Because I know John does have a Discord account, he just doesn't use it that much. Or he does and he doesn't tell us. He's an alt in the server. I want to get it as close to what his Reach Spartan would look like. Um, I know he has that reach modification that only people who pre-order the game can have. Obviously, I didn't pre-order it. And while I do have modded accounts, I couldn't get those permutations. Oh, so it was just whatever. We just rolled with what we had. What's happening, John? I gotta give props Captain to Desi. Beaminator for his promo performance yeah. as Beaminator Captain Desi. It was really good. No problem, man. And anyone like who's looking for, you, you know, a hint show. towards where part two is going, no, Beaminator's performance just goes well here, above what part one is. He really does a good job. And, and obviously everyone did a good job. You know, Celtic did a good job as John. I'm your number one fan. Blizz was good as Blizz. Jazz was good as Jazz. Everyone did a good job. I just really got a kick out of Beam's one, you know, because he did ad-libs and he kind of put his own stuff into the recording sessions that gave me a chuckle when I was just in downtime going through vocal files. Oh, you have Max Johnson coming in. Uh, the joke wasn't apparent, but the reason he's always on a mongoose was because in season 7 of Arby and the Chief, when Tyler visits uh, the apartment to kill uh, Arbiter and Chief, he obviously comes up with a chainsaw to try and cut down the door, um, which Max thought was a dirt bike for some reason. How he would get a dirt bike up all those stairs or even inside an elevator is beyond me, but he thought it was a dirt bike, so obviously there's no dirt bikes in the Halo games. So we had to improvise, and I used a mongoose. So that was that joke that's being brought out there. I know, it's hilarious. Thank you. So the reason this scene is flowing the way it is is because Max, Desi, and Austin all seem to kind of resent each other. And they all kind of, they're all cringy. They all kind of suck up to John. And I thought that was kind of funny to bring through the scene here. And there's all this other stuff happening, like... 
Max plugging his stream, Austin saying really irrelevant shit, and Desi being really needlessly hostile to people for no reason. So this scene with the exposition was really good because it allowed him to do some self-deprecating jokes and kind of poke some fun at the army chief fandom. And it was all in good fun. I don't actually hate any of these series. In fact, I enjoy all of them, you know. I enjoy Next Gen from what I've watched of it. I've enjoyed uh, Dragon and Chief. Uh, what, what am I missing? Todd and Travis was Flick's one, which he never made, but he was willing to do it, so I had to roll with it when I was making it. And you'll see some footage from Ashes to Ashes in here as well, which is stuff that I actually did shoot, in fact. Which I might, I might put up the cut of what's been done so far someday. We'll see. Man, we'll see how Civil Discord does. So, I find all this really... Mm, it came together well. I made the screen look pretty legit. And it, it's kind of similar to Season 6, like, I guess it said it on screen. Like, it's like Season 6 from Arab and the Chief, where they're going after Chaos Theosis. Four characters, and you have a reason for both teams to go after me in the end, you know? Provided that uh, Desi's team did actually go after me as well. That's a risk I can't take. Every other so burnt out, that's basically what's happening in this scene. I need to know there was something else going on in here as well. I believe it wasn't going to be John taking Desi's car, but I believe he was going to fly off in Austin's Falcon or something. I'm not sure. Oh, the frag ban. I wasn't sure where I was going to go with that. I was going to say, is it going to make their consoles burn down? Is he going to make them die in real life? Is he going to send them to hell? I think it'd be funniest to kill them. Because it seems like that would be the logical next step in the Arabian Chief fandom. Or the Arabian Chief universe, you know? So we did that. And obviously you have those little jokes in there, how Austin's trying to cut jokes and it's not funny. Max saying weird lispy stuff for no reason. The modded Warthog was a must. It had to go in there. And I wanted to set it up as a, you know, a payoff for a joke later on. Uh, in case this joke didn't land with people, that was John dying in a car crash. Because there were several rumors, you know, roughly 10 years ago that John would die in a car crash. It would come up every few months when he, he was inactive, you know. If he hadn't uploaded a new episode or... I think it happened around the time of Endgame. People kept saying, like, where is John? Where is John? Is he dead? Um, this is obviously referencing Endgame towards the start. This whole scene of two characters talking in a truck I've wanted to do for years and years. And it makes me really wish that they had put these vehicles in the multiplayer sandbox for Halo Reach. And maybe there's a, a modded game type that you can get, like the, um, the SVE Mythic Slayer, where you can get it because these vehicles are so underused in Halo Reach. And I like the idea of these guys being inside the server, using this truck to transport all this kind of dark content to uh, the furry community. Dark's probably not fair, but all this kind of yif content and photos of his dog doing stuff that could be sexually misconstrued, I guess. And it flows really well, it's like an actual conversation. Even though Jazz and Blizz recorded their stuff separately, it really kind of flows nicely. And then we have Cal, he, um, so he has the, uh, is it the rotting armor effect on? And that's not because, you know, he's a furry or anything, it's just because we think that he's personally a degenerate. Um, vocal performance is really funny there. I had to put some vocal work onto it though, because I believe Cali doesn't identify as male or female, so we had to put it in that kind of gender neutral kind of bracket, because even though I brought the pitch up, there's kind of like this bassy timbre to the voice as well. So, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Oh, I love this cut as well. This cut of uh, going to the next scene, I really like. Like, it's tough for me to watch after the first seven minutes of it, but from here onwards, I do like part one. Flick was a complete champ for doing this, and Ari was really good for doing best girl as well. I was considering bringing down the pitch on Ari's voice to do Best Girl, but I wanted to be more honest that it was a girl, you know? And I wanted to have a very clear female character in this team as well, for Civil Discord. 
And this scene just flows really well. Any last words? God, it's so funny. Where can you find the podcast where John talks about Kale leaving the show? That's a little in joke there from Flick. And I'm guessing even though they're good guys, you're seeing this underlying dark side to Desi where maybe he's actually enjoying killing these characters, you know? Like maybe he's no longer he's no longer doing his job. He's doing something he enjoys, you know? He longs for the blood. So that's part one of Civil Discord. Uh, thanks for listening to me drone on for 20 minutes. Jesus Christ. Um, look forward to part two. It's a coming real soon. Okay, take care.